Okay, that's good. So uh, about a third said Mushy Peas, about a third said Monty Python, and about a third said Harry Potter. So that's really, really difficult to just pick one. Uh, I mean, it's like pretty much even. So, uh, so I'm going to have to do all three. Turns out I'm going to have to incorporate all three. So, uh, so anyway, uh, my name is Michael Jackson. Uh, it's very nice to be here in London. Uh, thank you for having me, and thank the organizers for cutting out a tiny bit of time for me at the end of the uh, meetup here. It's 9 o'clock, it's late, I know everybody wants to go home, um, get really lush. Um, that's the word, right, for somebody who gets uh, after the meetup? Anyway. Um, and, uh, okay, so, um, so what I thought I would talk about tonight is uh, time, okay? So one of the things that I do, actually the main thing that I do to earn money, to put food on the table for my family, I have four children, I live in San Francisco, that's a lot of food, um, and it's expensive food in San Francisco, it's all like green smoothies and junk. Um, and, uh, and so one of the things that I do is I train people on React uh, full-time. I run a company called uh, React Training together with my partner Ryan Florence, who was detained in customs and sent speedily back to the United States. That's another story entirely. Um, we're not doing anything illegal, I promise. Uh, OK, so uh, one of the things that we like to talk about in our trainings is this idea of time, OK? Time is the enemy. Um, and if you might be looking at me thinking, like, what do you mean by that? Uh, so what we want is we want to be able to eliminate time in our React apps, right? One of the greatest things about React is that it makes things declarative. So you, can, uh, you don't actually have to experience the app in order to be able to predict the types of things that it will do. Um, you could actually clone this repo that I'm going to run right now, this example. I'm going to do some code. Uh, you can clone it from github.com, react.js training, uh, react training material, if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to do an npm install up here, um, unfortunately. Uh, I tried that before. Here, uh, last time I gave a talk in Europe, it didn't, uh, didn't go so well. Uh, besides, Ryan's not here to bail me out. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but anyway, you can, you can install the code, and then you npm install, and you npm run it, and you can run this exact code that I'm going to be running. Um, so let's see. If you go into the imperative to declarative code, uh, you'll see a little thing like this. Kind of cool, right? It's a little square that makes a little <laughs> Some good bass response. Um, how many people know what a theremin is? Yeah, only a crowd of programmers. Like, yeah, so a theremin is this cool thing where um, one hand controls the volume and the other hand controls the pitch and you just sort of move them around in the air and then uh, this, is my, this is my attempt at at reproducing a theremin in a web browser. Um, so it's kind of a cool little component. By the way, feel free to you know, play this thing as I'm up here. Um, I'll consider it a compliment, actually. Let's take a look at our app. Let's take a look at the code here and see what it's doing. Um, and let's, let's take a look, in fact, at, at our render function. So the heart of any React component is the render function, right? Um, and what I want to know is by looking at this render function, can I predict? exactly what this app is going to do when the page loads. For example, um, is it going to be playing? What pitch is it going to be playing? What's the volume, right? If, if it is at all uh, going to be playing. Um, right now, we can't actually tell. We have this little div, and then we're listening for a bunch of mouse events, and as the mouse enters and leaves, we start and stop and change the pitch and change the volume. Um, based on the x, y coordinates. Um, so that makes it really, really difficult. Well, what I find when, I, when I'm building these React components is if I can boil it down, if I can answer the following two questions, everything becomes easy for me. If I can answer the question, what state do I have? What state do we have in this app? Whether or not we're playing, right? We could say uh, false to start out. 
Uh, we've got the pitch. Uh, that's on a scale of 0 to 1. So we'll say, uh, I don't know, we'll start at 0.5. Uh, and then we've got the volume. OK? Um, and so now, see all of these, these imperative calls? This dot oscillator dot play, this dot oscillator dot stop. This dot oscillator is just our little web audio thing, OK? Um, lots of times, you'll see somebody who is, you know, you know they'll write a React component, um, and they'll have lots of these kinds of sort of imperative calls on it. And they'll say, oh, yeah, just stick a ref on it, and then when you get a reference to my component, now you can call methods on it, right? Wasn't well, that nice? We went from this great declarative API, and we're right back in imperative mode. We're right back in imperative land. Uh, how can we make this imperative code more declarative? Um, you'll notice that it's going to actually make it a lot easier to predict what's going to happen in our render function. Let's write this method called do imperative work, OK, for lack of a better name. Um, and everything that that's imperative that we have to do, we're going to do inside there. So we're going to cut this thing out. We're going to say, uh, we're going to put this there. Uh, we're going to use this here at some point. Uh, we're going to use these here at some point. OK. Now, since I have these things in state, all these functions have to do is update state. Uh, true here. Right, and this is going to be false here. Uh, and, and similarly here, I've got state for pitch and volume. So I could just set those up here. OK. Now when it's time to do imperative work, I want to get these, uh, these variables off of my state. Uh, is playing, pitch, and volume this dot state? Um, now I can say, if we are playing, uh, then go ahead and play. Let's see, move that up. Uh, otherwise, stop. Um, and then we'll just set the pitch and the volume every time around. Now the question is, where to do this imperative work? Uh, React actually gives us this really cool lifecycle method. Component did. Mount, oops, component did mount. It's kind of the kissing cousin of component will mount. Component did mount, right? That means now we have a DOM in the page. And, or sorry, a DOM in the page. Yeah, that's true, I guess, actually. Uh, we have an element, a DOM node, that's actually in the page, in the document, right? Um, so we can now do imperative stuff on that DOM node, like, I don't know, use the Web Audio API. Um, so let's say this dot do imperative work. Okay. Um, now, can you tell me if the tone is going to be playing when uh, I first render it into the page? No, right? We know now. We can predict it, right? Because we can see that piece of state that says false. I'm not playing. What if we change it? What if we change the pitch? We have eliminated time. Hold on, we've got a graphic for that. No, nope, not that one. Oh. Yeah, time makes me sad. Yeah, boom, there's time. You're gone, time. Although, this breaks my heart every time this scene. Anyway, so time is gone. All right, so get on with it. Uh, OK, so, uh, so what's really, really cool about this? OK, what advantages do we have? Well, now I can predict exactly what my render method's going to do. Um, can we do more? What if I extracted out all of this sort of imperative stuff? What if I put it in a separate component? What if I called it like a tone component? You might be thinking, what in the world are you going to render with a tone component? My answer is nothing. Well, then what's the point? 
right? These components, I use these components to render user interface stuff, right? Well, try telling a, a blind person that sound is not a user interface. It absolutely is. If you're, if you're blind, you can't see. The main way that the computer communicates with you is to actually talk to you. Um, have you ha has anybody ever worked with accessibility? I know you do a ton of it here at Facebook, right? You've got the uh, Empathy Lab uh, in Menlo Park at the, at the, uh, the uh, Facebook campus down there in Menlo Park. It's, it's terrific. You go down there and you can use Facebook on all these sorts of assistive devices and realize, you know, what does Facebook feel like for somebody who, who can't see or somebody who can't hear? How would they use Facebook? Um, sound is absolutely a piece of UI. So we're still going to keep all of our state in our app component. But we're going to move up this do imperative work. We're going to move this up into our tone component. And since we don't have any state, we're going to just take all of this stuff as props now. Because props are really just state from our parent, right? So let's go ahead and render one of these. Uh, we'll just render it inside here. Tone. Dot, 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 this dot state. Just going to pass all of our state to our tone component as props. Uh, make sure everything works. Is Chrome going to refresh it because I'm not even in that tab? Yeah, it is. OK, good. Everything still works. Well, now we can do all sorts of fun stuff. What's going to happen? Let's predict. We can look at our render method, right? That's what render methods are really, really great at, right? What is going to happen? I'm going to have two sounds now, right? I just made sound like totally reusable. Some of you are still saying, get on with it. Oops. On mouse move, this set state. Oh. Thanks. So the other piece of the puzzle that's missing and why it didn't really play was because when I'm moving the mouse around, we've got this other thing, this other chance to do imperative work, not just when we mount, but every time we receive new props. What's the method for that? Component did update. Gosh, come on, guys. Whole room of React people. Component did update. All right. Let's do some more imperative work. OK. Not bad, right? The best thing about this is we can look right at our render method, and we can know exactly what's going to happen. We are now no longer in imperative land. We're totally in declarative land. Um, let's go a step further. Let's take this stuff out. Let's put this in a theorem and component. Uh, after I leave here, I want somebody to hook this up to their, their camera. Instead of taking mouse events, oops, we're going to take uh, your, your hand as it's waving in the air. OK? Mm. Uh, and I'm also going to take out all of this state. Theremin owns the state. Theremin knows how to, how to handle these mouse movements, right? Um, something else that's kind of cool that you can do with the, uh, actually, let's just render one of these, first of all. Just com confirm everything works. going to happen now. It's 
Some people are like, oh my gosh. Back in like physics and remembering looking at the waves, the sawtooth and the square wave. Uh, it turns out the Web Audio API actually supports all these wave types. Let's pass our type on through to our tone. How should we reflect it here? Just another prop. Is it going to work? I got one guy nodding his head here. How many people think it's going to work? Come on, take a stand. That's, that's almost half. How many people are like, no way, dude, you're screwed? How many people are like, right? Not bad. Okay. okay, so lesson is, from this lightning talk, lesson is uh, when we make things, when we go from imperative to declarative, uh, we actually make our UIs a lot easier to reason about, a lot easier to predict. We take time totally, totally, totally out of the equation. Um, which means that we can ease. Woo. There you go. Sound guys, like I've had enough. Uh, which means we can uh, more easily reason about what our components are going to do when they're actually in the page. Um, thank you for having me. My name is Michael Jackson. I run React.js training. We're in town this week. We're running a couple of workshops. So come and talk to me if you think you might be interested in some React training for your team. Sorry for the pitch. And uh, I'm M. Jackson on Twitter and GitHub and everywhere else. Um, so. Uh, thank you for your time, and cheers. Thank you. That's awesome. Has anyone got any questions? Oh. Oh, you can't get away that I easy. I do this, the silly walk on the way out? Yeah, yeah. Test, any test. questions? Oh, I guess I've already got a mic. Oh, come on. OK, no one wants to. No questions. Everybody's like, get on with the, the booze. <laughs> yes, Dan. Or oh, sorry, what is your name, sir? <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, what do you think about observables? What do I think about what? Observables. Observables. Yeah. I, think, I think they're the next big thing, honestly. I think if I had the ability to observe an event in JavaScript, it would change everything for me. <laughs> I mean, that's new, right? It's a new thing, right? I mean, event emitters and stuff, that's new, right? OK, yeah, no, it's going to change everything. That's awesome. Yep. Any other questions? It's been going to change everything for the last seven years. Yeah, right. Oh, well, you mean we've had them? Oh, I guess nothing's really going to change. Uh, no other Anyone questions? Else? Any non sarcastic? OK, <laughs> great. Thanks, everybody. OK, thank you very much. So um, big thanks to Facebook, big thanks to all the speakers, um, to Yanni, Ali, Jonas, and Michael. Um, next month at um, Skills Matter, don't forget to register. Um, and then we're back here the month after. So thank you very much for coming uh, to the pub. Let's go. You and I have come from the same